big data, a lot of, in the industry, people talk about the three Vs. So you might think about big data as volume, right? Oh, it's a lot of data, so it must be big. That's actually the least of the problems. That's the most easily handleable one, is the volume of the data. The next one is velocity. That's now more tricky. The data arrives at a fast rate. If we're talking about banks and many other institutions, usually you don't process that data right away. You actually sit on it and you process it in batch. You wait till end of day, end of week, end of month, right? End of quarter in some cases. And then you process the data. And by then you've got an amazing amalgam of problems where you actually don't know how to problem solve. There's a whole other in, uh, architecture that says process it right away. Why ever wait? Why ever wait to process anything that rather than doing it right there, almost in real time. It turns out it sounds fancy, it sounds more complicated, but it actually simplifies life. One of my big lessons learned at Yahoo, I took them from batch to basically streaming in real time in about three years. That simplified our life so much. We actually had smaller teams, everything worked well, the business was happy, people were just you know, ecstatic about it because they actually see what's happening on the site almost immediately, they can react to it, they can launch new products right away. All that good stuff. In a bank, you know, if, you, if you're on top of your data monthly, that's considered amazing, right? Uh, and here I come talking about, well, next second, right? Variety, and that's the worst one. That's the hardest one. So this data is, a, if, if you've got things like images, right? If you've got things like recording, voice recordings from your call center, database doesn't know what to do with it. I know this is not a technical audience. Here's a technical term, blob. Does anybody know what blob stands for? Binary large object. This is database speak for image. <laughs> if I take an image and I stuff it in a database, it just puts it as a bunch of bits. It doesn't know anything about what's inside this image. It doesn't even understand it. Doesn't know how to do things like join and query on it or anything. It's a way of saying, oh yeah, we can ingest that data type, but we don't do anything with it. What's a clob? Since you know what a blob is. Ah, this one is a goodie. What's a clob? Character large object, another word for document. Don't ask me why they don't want to call it a document, right? But it's a club, right? And I put this whole document in a field and now it's not, I can't search on it. I can't find two documents that relate to each other. None of that, databases don't know any of that. So that's the first messy situation created by Variety. And it's a big deal. Wouldn't you like your contracts to be there? And as you, as you re retrieve a customer record, wouldn't you be able to correlate it to something in a contract or a product description or what have you? Let me take you back to my days at Yahoo. We had something called the Yahoo user DNA. We had about 3,000 fields for each user. And in my time, we had about 600 million users. So 600 million users, for each user, I have 3,000 quantities, all the way from where they live, what, they, what I think they work as, uh, what they're interested in, their behaviors, all that stuff. Is this big data? Is it big? 600 million by 3,000? No, it's not, actually. This is very structured, very classical data. But let me show you now how any data set, particularly this one, can become a truly a big data set. And by the way, this applies to data about people in this auditorium. I'll show you how it becomes a big data set almost immediately. So this is a person who happens to be a male, age 32, lives in San Francisco, is a lawyer, blah, 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 right? So you've heard of LinkedIn. I'm sure this is an academic audience and professional. Right? I go to LinkedIn and I can get all sorts of information about this person, who's associated with them, what company they have worked in in the past and now, right? job descriptions, etc. There's something called Google. I have a crawler that can go and do a whole bunch of searches on this stuff, retrieve it. This is a machine, of course. And get me all sorts of data about them, what they wrote, what they said, wh wh what people said about them. There's another little thing called Facebook, where these guys actually share all sorts of stuff about their personal life, including photos of where they go, and you know, all sorts of weird stuff, maybe dating habits. I'll share with you something here. Just before I joined Barclays, I was uh, chairman and CTO of a little startup called Blue Kangaroo uh, in the US, North America. They're supposed to be doing offers. So we take all the offers available on the internet, crunch them, and figure out which offer should apply to Yassi at any one moment based on what she's doing? What applies to me, et cetera. I brought two interns from France for a summer and I gave them a challenge. I said, you know, Facebook, people go to Facebook. Do you go to Facebook to shop? 
Do you think you tell Facebook any of your shopping preferences? So I said, you know, does Facebook contain a commercial signal? Can it tell you um, what I'm likely to be interested in? And I thought the answer would be no. I thought Twitter would, would be good for that, uh, but not Facebook. Now, let me tell you about me, right? I joined Facebook right in the early years because I was at Yahoo and we were considering buying them. Uh, so I made a few friends. Now I have a few thousand friends, and that's between quotes. I don't know half of them or maybe 80% of them. Um, in my lifetime, <clears throat> which has been long now, and, and by the way, we did consider buying uh, Facebook for a billion dollars, and we were hesitant. <laughs> there we go. It's now worth, what, three times Yahoo? So I made maybe 10, 12 likes in my lifetime with Facebook, right? Uh, but these guys came back, these interns came back with an amazingly accurate commercial profile of me. What kind of car I might like, where I might like to travel, what kind of products I might be interested in, right? How did they get these? Question to you. How did they get this information when I told you my, by the way, I mean, I, I, do, I use Twitter and my tweets show up on Facebook. And a lot of people react on Facebook to my tweets. I never see the reactions, of course. And then I get very angry people saying, Osama, you never responded to my comment, right? But anyway, so this is how little I use Facebook. What do you think? Likes? But I only did a few likes in my lifetime. Hmm? My friends' likes. My quote-unquote friends, who I, re I, I, I barely know, actually that signal was enough to, to construct a really good commercial profile about me. Actually, if you want a stock tip, this tells you that Facebook is probably worth a lot more than the market values it at. But anyway, so the likes tell you a lot of information. There's something called YouTube, uh, Flickr, where you share images and so forth. In no time, I can get any videos having to do with this individual, where they work, where they live, etc. There's metadata, we won't go into that. There's blogs, publications, all that stuff. Now, take any database, maybe the people in this room, Give me half an hour, and I'll have access to all this. That's a big data set. Not by volume, by variety. And most institutions, I include the US government, which boasts a lot about its capabilities, don't know what to do with this. Right? You get frozen. If I throw at you something with a social graph and something with all sorts of information, what do you do? How do you analyze it? Where do you begin? Right? Yet the problem actually is solvable. We talked about the three V's, so what's the fourth V in big data? It's about getting value out, 